The upper Stalo are the Indian people of the middle and upper Fraser Valley. We live in communities from Langley to Yale. Stalo is the Halkamalam word, which means river. We are the river people. Our lives have always depended on the Fraser River and its waterways. Ours is a way of life based on the land and the seasons. The Great Spirit taught us our ways. He taught us to thank the river and the land for what we took. We were taught never to harm or destroy nature, never to take more than we needed. We are the traditional protectors of this land. The land and the river have supported our people, and in return, we have taken care of the environment. Respect for all living things was shared, and because of that respect, we had a strong society that has survived for hundreds of years. Our ancestors have passed on important teachings, handed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. These teachings contained strict social rules and ways of behaving. Traditions were strengthened by passing Halkamalam names to younger members of the family. Elders chose those who would carry their name from the characteristics shown by the young person. The new owners of the name are taught to respect it and act in a way that will not bring dishonor to their name. Today, we still practice many of our teachings and traditions, but our lives have changed over the past hundred years because of the European influence. In this program you are about to see, we will show you how traditional Stala ways have been and are still, based on the changing seasons and the land, and why we feel that the land is so special. Families had hereditary use of the land and its resources. There were no written laws that prevented other people from using this land. Everyone knew one another and because they respected each other, they did not use each other's land without permission. Some areas, by prearrangement of families, were shared with others. Nature has influenced the names given to our seasons. The names for each season and month describe the seasonal activities throughout the year. Our Halkamalam words for the seasons are seldom heard today, but we still live by them. They are a part of our lives, our culture. We respect them. Traditionally, our year began when the weather turned cold. During Tem Halaloch, the fall, our people lived in big houses. It was more convenient for extended families to live and work together while smoking and curing food for Tem Chait, the cold time. The big house, which is sometimes called the long house or smoke house, is no longer lived in. It is used for gatherings and from the end of October to March for spirit dancing. The old moon of Tomkwalo, dog salmon time, is the end of our stallow year. The favorite fish for smoking, dog salmon, arrived during Timkwala. These salmon were speared, then cured by smoking to preserve them for the long winter months. Deer, elk, mountain goat were hunted and trapped. Small game was snared. Cedar bark clothing was made and hides were tanned. Hair was gathered from the mountain goats living high in the mountains, then spun and woven into ceremonial robes. 
This is part of our past that is lost to us forever. The mountain goats, once prized for their meat and hair, still live in our area but have greatly decreased in numbers. Deer hides, which were once used for blankets, are becoming rare since our hunting is restricted. We now weave our blankets and robes from sheep's wool. Today we continue to hunt, trap and fish, but we can no longer travel to many of our traditional family, fishing, hunting and plant gathering sites and have to abide by the laws of Canada as to the time and areas for carrying on these activities. This makes it very difficult to supply our winter needs, so we also take advantage of modern shopping centers. Today, the fall season begins when our children return to school. We have a choice of sending our children to one of the public schools in the upper Stalo area, or sending them to a band-controlled school. Whole time was the time when we were together at our villages. During Hitsuwisto, which means time to store away canoe paddles for winter, the ice and snow started to make river travel by canoe hard or impossible. We stored away our dugout canoes by turning them over. The paddles were stored under the canoes. Just before Makas, Fall and snow season, our people moved into winter pit houses. These houses were semi underground log frame dwellings, which were entered by a notched log through the roof. People gathered in the big houses to sing songs, dance, feast, tell stories, and play Slahel, the bone game. It was the time to give and receive gifts. This was also a time of much darkness, so the dried sockeye salmon heads were used at night for lanterns, and the month was called Palakas, torch season. Today, classes on reserve are continued throughout the winter months on sailish weaving, knitting, the making of cedar root baskets and cedar bark clothing, and the art of carving and canoe building. With the onset of Tamquiles, spring season, many birds and animals return to our lands, signaling the time for renewing food supplies with fresh fish, meat, and vegetables. We moved from our winter houses into mat shelters. These bulrush mats could be carried, like tents, to fishing, hunting, and gathering spots. Trout, salmon, and sturgeon were netted, hooked, and speared. Cedar bark and roots were gathered at this time for the fall activities of making clothing and baskets. Today, the changing seasons continue to influence our lives. However, we no longer move from the big house to the pit house to mat shelters. In the past hundred years, changes to the landscape have severely limited the places where food can be gathered Damage by highways, railways, and other developments have destroyed some of these places forever. In the spring, because we can no longer travel to our food gathering areas, we have had to adopt the European way of gardening. We still pick berries and plants, mushrooms, and medicinal herbs when we are able. Around May, the month is called Tem Alila, 
famine berry time. These were the first berries to ripen and became the start of six or seven months of berry picking. We now preserve our berries by canning, jamming, and freezing instead of making dried berry cakes, and we can take advantage of modern method of preserving vegetables, meat, and other fruit. In preparation for the season's traveling, new dugout canoes were built and old ones repaired. Learning was a year-round activity for children and adults. The elders of the village passed their knowledge and experience on to the younger members of their community every day. They told stories of the origins of our people and taught important rules of conduct through these and other stories. Hot time brings many changes. The major fishing season began in the summer when salmon came up the Fraser River and its waterways to spawn. Families gathered at their sites along the river where fish were caught in dip nets. Fishing methods have changed over the years. We now use boats with motors instead of canoes. Torch lighting is no longer allowed and our nets are made of nylon, not cedar bark. This was Temthakwe, Sakai time. Sakai heading for the Stewart River passed through the upper stellar area during July and August. The fish were split, cut and hung to dry. Our family still traveled to the Yale area of the Fraser Canyon where we preserve by canning, wind drying, or salting the sockeye for our gatherings and winter food supply. The salmon still run at various times in the Fraser River and its waterways, but in ever decreasing numbers. The changes to the river brought about by development have made life more difficult for the returning fish. Several reserves have established salmonid enhancement programs in order to ensure a future for their livelihood. These programs are becoming increasingly more successful. Summer is also a time for sporting events, which bring us together with Indian communities throughout BC and Washington State. Caldas Lake and Seabird Island, people gather for salmon barbecues, canoe racing, slahal games, and other activities. The Upper Stala people have always been great canoe builders. We still carve and shape canoes from a single cedar log, although our tools are now modern. We no longer use canoes for fishing or transportation, but train our young people as pullers for participating in the many war canoe races at our festivals. The training is long and hard. Canoe pulling is a traditional way of teaching our young people physical development and spiritual strength. Changes continually affect us year-round. Once the Stalo lived freely in the whole Fraser Valley between Langley and Yale, we are now limited to 83 reserves where members of our 24 bands live. In the past, hereditary chiefs and elders were the leaders of our people. Today, local band government is influenced by the Indian and Northern Affairs Canada guidelines. Every two years, we elect a chief and two to six councillors. Today, we are gaining more control over our lives. Our struggle is to establish our right as individuals and native people under the Constitution of Canada. Many of our young people who are continuing their education are following professional careers, some as teachers and lawyers. We are able to live in the present while carrying on our traditions of the past. 
we are becoming more involved in the changes that are occurring and we are making these changes more positive and meaningful to our lives. In the past few years, there has been a cultural revival. Interest in the old ways is being reborn. The knowledge our elders have of our history and our language is the base for the current language department and Stalo Sito curriculum project, which are a part of the Kokalitsa Center. In the future, our strength as an Indian nation will depend on our knowledge and practice of important Stalo teachings and traditions.